Right now, joining us, the former Jamaican international in Montreal Impact and the guy with the million dollar smile, Lloyd Barker. Lloyd, welcome again, my friend. Uh, it's great to be here, Anthony. How are you, sir? I'm still getting off that high last night. What a game. What a night. I've got goosebumps. I had an opportunity to text and congratulate a couple good buddies on the staff there, Enzo and Paolo Pacioni. Just happy for the crew and happy for the fans of Montreal. What were the emotions that were going through you watching the end of that game last night, Lloyd? <laughs> Man, I played 10 years for the club. And I tell you what, I can't remember my heart beating that fast <laughs> watching that game, especially near the last uh, the dying moments when it looked like, my word, Santos Laguna was going to come back to haunt this team yet again. It looked like another five minutes, it might have been a rebirth of that nightmare that was in 2009 where Santos Laguna beat Montreal 5-2 two, to two when they went there to Mexico with a 2 nothing advantage. But in the end, um, you know, it's, it's what sports is all about. You know, you get highs, you've got lows. And uh, I had a very joyous, joyous uh, midnight celebration, shall we say, after that game ended. It was a wonderful, wonderful moment for the squad and for the group. Outstanding, Lloyd. Let's talk about it, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Let's start with the good. To me, the good was Evan Bush. This guy was lights out good. And I got to tell you, I was happy to see Jack McElerney, a guy who you, I'm sure, are also happy to see, get back on that scoring uh, you know, tear that he was on when he was with the Philadelphia Union. Good on this young man. Talk about Evan Bush, Jack McElerney, and the way they played last night. Well, as far as Evan Bush, I mean, look, I, I think as, as far as players, he had the most difficult job. And by that, I mean, you know the elements that he's facing. He's, it's not just about facing shots. He's got to be ducking objects being thrown to him throughout the entire contest, as was the case. And he ended up getting hit in the head by a coin, which is obviously uh, distasteful. And, and it's just something at the side of the game that we never, ever, ever want to see. And the reality is it happened, and, and it's going to happen again if they were to be in that same environment again. He was being thrown with cans, and even shoes were being thrown at Evan Bush. And so I really commended Evan, you know, for the way he stood tall, and, you know, players were running at him. The Jonathan McDonald went at his ankles a couple times. He started as early as in the, couple, in the first few minutes of the game. So they knew what they were trying to do, and Evan was like, he was zen out there. And, and to be quite honest, I mean, there are four goals scored against him, and maybe, just maybe, he might want the fourth one back. But the other three he had nothing to do with. He, could, he couldn't stop them. Uh, it was really just defensive breakdowns. And, of course, in the one case, uh, I got scored a terrific set piece, um, direct free kick. So I think in the end, you know, Evan Bush did what he could um, to manage the game for his team. He kept his team in it. And on the other side of things, you know, you've got to feel good for Jack McInerney because as a striker, you work with confidence. You work with rhythm. And, and if those things are out of sync, you're going to struggle. And Jack had been struggling earlier on in the season. There was question marks about his training habits. Jack himself came out and admitted that maybe, you know, he could step it up a bit. Or maybe he was being misperceived uh, by his body language because that does sometimes let him down. But it's terrific Jack McInerney. Two games now he scored. He scored the goal of the week in Major League Soccer last week against Orlando. Uh, I mean, it's in uh, a rare start for him. And, and, and again, last night, it's terrific. And it's a classic uh, McInerney goal where he, you know, he's, he fronts his man in the near post and, and just steers it in. It's a very good cross from Dominic Odoro. And it's all he needs, and that's what he does. He's a great finisher. Not necessarily the great in the run of play, but he's a great finisher. You put it on his foot in the box, and he's going to score. And it was good for me to see that because I know how it is with strikers. You get your head down, your confidence is low, and you struggle. So two games, two goals. Hopefully he can keep it going. You know, to me, the bad was the defending last night, Lloyd. I mean, I thought Sumari, uh, Cabrera, and, and Chiman and Toya all, all had a real sketchy game. I think they, they let Pablo Gabas, uh, you know, run terror on them throughout the game. What were your thoughts on that back line last night? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to tell you that I don't think it was only the back line. I think overall, the entire squad, especially in the last bits, and, and we talked a lot about, the first, uh, including Coach Klopas, they spoke a lot about the importance of the first 15, 20 minutes. But for me, you know, having been in these situations, I know firsthand that it's the last 20 minutes are more important than the first 20 minutes uh, because you can match them stride for stride, 
you know, tip to tap, anything that goes in the first 20 minutes that they do, you can also do. But things change in the second half, the momentum drops, you know, the energy is really low while they're, they're, theirs remain a bit high from the adrenaline of being from the, uh, being at home and in front of their home crowd. That's all significant. So for me, I thought the last 20 minutes was poor by the squad because I thought they should have dropped the line defensively at half line and played from there, and that did not happen. They were much too stretched. And so when that happens, I know what you're alluding to because what ends up happening is that the back line becomes a little bit more pressured and they have to do a lot more work um, than normal, really. And, and I think that's what happened. I just thought they had a lot more to do than really they should have had to do had the team been a lot more compact, especially in the second half, maybe the last 20 to 25 minutes, where you really just parked the bus. And, and you know, I don't like to do that. Um, it's not my motto as a coach, uh, but the re- that's the reality. You're under pressure. You're under hostile conditions. It's a difficult, difficult place to come away with the result. You know, you've got to do things kind of out of, out of character. And pressing high uh, was not the way to do it. And from what I understand, it wasn't the instructions from the, the coaching staff. It was really just chaos on the field, and players are taking matters in their own hands to stretch the side on, and it really almost cost them. Two guys that I was really happy for that have come from other clubs that basically dished them out uh, was Nigel Rio Coker and Dominic Oduro. These two guys, I was really happy to see that now they're on to the final because let's be honest, I mean, they've come from clubs that really had no more use for them. Here they are with Montreal. Uh, Frank Lopez and his staff have used them effectively, and these two veterans have really shown up. Yeah, and, you know, I don't think Nigel had his best game yesterday. Um, you know, I think I think he kind of exemplifies what's still going on with the team and the, kind of the number one issue, in that, and that's just connecting passes out of midfield. Um, but, but in saying that, I won't knock him because one thing he does give you is what he's got. And I love that in players. I mean, it, it might not work on the day, but, but at least, you know, show up and work. And, and he's tried to do that, and he's done that day in, day out. And, and I'm with you on that. You know, he's come from a bad situation, and maybe it seemed his career was kind of derailing. And this is a good moment for him. And he's, he's, he's obviously well-respected around here because he's wearing the captain armband, uh, and it was significant that even when Patrice Bernier came on that he kept the armband. Oftentimes you see the players change those things, not just when they substitute off. But with that said, I know they respect Nigel a lot. The locker room respects him. The coaching staff respects him. And he's delivering the goods. I mean, Look, it doesn't matter who they brought here in terms of where they're coming from. Once you drop in a situation where the locker room is positive and the energy is good, you're going to feel that ex- you're going to feel that energy, that revived energy that you didn't have from where you're coming from. Uh, so for me, it's great to see all these guys. It's 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 uh, it's terrific to see how they have kind of just warped into to each other, uh, bought into the system that the manager is trying to implement. It's still a work in progress. And, and it, it only gets better from here. And they've they haven't achieved anything. I mean, let's get that clear. They've they've you know they've they've done something that's historic indeed because they're the first Canadian team to qualify uh, for the Concacaf Champions League finals. But as you and I both know, we don't play this game to reach the semifinals or just to get to the finals. We play to win this thing. And so, still a lot of work to go. And, and Nigel Riacopa certainly will be a big, big part of that. You're bang on. You're bang on with that comment. Lloyd, before I let you go, we got to talk about the ugly. I don't know how many times in the last five years here on Red Card I've had to talk about racism. And quite frankly, I'm getting sick and tired of it. Last night again, the Dominic Oduro, the, the monkey chants and, and things thrown at him. My stomach churns. I, I want to go through my TV set and strangle these people into submission. I've said this time and time again. Again, Lloyd, I'm a parent of two boys, and to me, I don't care what color you are, pink, purple, blue, black, white, yellow. If you can score, if you can stop the ball, if you can be a great team player, I want you on my team. And when things were taking place, I'll never forget, with Mario Balotelli, and my two sons love this player, it wretched my stomach. I need you to talk to our viewers and our listeners once and for all how this needs to be stopped because the game we love so much gets ruined by certain situations like this, Lloyd. Well, you know what, look, if, and here's the ironic thing. I mean, Dominic Oduro, you will not meet a more pleasant, pleasant player than Dominic Oduro. And, and that's, you know, part of the irony in how this is all played out, is that you've got a guy who he picks opponents up if he fouls them. He tells everyone sorry for what he's done. And yet he's getting... 
you know, the brute force of the ugly, ugly side that is racism, racism in our game. I mean, monkey chance, are we still at that? It, it, it blows my mind. As, as Dominic Oduro said in his tweet, you know, it's still it's mind-boggling that in this day and age that is still going on. And, and, you know, the other side of it is, the puzzling side of it is that we're also talking about a guy who, it's, they're playing, they're, Alvarenza has 20% of their players are black players. So what, what is this fan base? I mean, what are they thinking? It's, it's, it's most mystifying because if you're doing that against an opposition, when in, the other, in your own team you've got so many players, five, six, seven, or eight black players in their team, what does that say for you? I mean, are you a real fan? I, I don't think so. You know, you, they're confused. It's not fan support. It's hooliganism. It's ignorance. And quite frankly, it's, it's more than just distasteful. It's, well, it's, I mean, with every word and adjective you could place there, it is disgraceful at its, its highest level, and it doesn't belong anywhere in our game, and it's got to go. I mean, Dominic Oduro, one of the nicest players you will ever come across, doesn't deserve any of that, let alone any other black player for that matter. You're bang on, Lloyd. We're going to let you go so you can grab that call, my friend. Always a pleasure having you on. God bless. Enjoy the rest of this Champions League a final home and away that Montreal is going to uh, play later on this month. It should be exciting. And again, it's outstanding to see the Montreal fans, the few of them that made the trip down there and watch that uh, history being made for their club. Lloyd, thanks again and keep up the great work, my friend. Thank you, buddy. You take care, Anthony. That is Lloyd Barker. Love having him on. He is a class act and a wonderful, wonderful human being.